Marketing can be a difficult thing, especially when it comes to big brands trying to diversify and experiment. Sometimes they produce a hit, like cherry-flavored Pepsi. Other times you get Pokemon sea salt and cheese-flavored water. Cheese water? Really? Some of these products have to be bought to be believed, which is exactly what I did. So, join me as I purchase, review, and regret some of the strangest products ever released by famous brands. Cheesy Kisses If you're American, at some point you've probably found your fingers covered in the familiar cheesy, salty, orange detritus that is Cheeto dust. Sorry, that's Cheetle, according to the Cheetos marketing team. Whatever you call it, Cheetos once tried to make people wear it on their face. Allow me to introduce Cheetos Lip Balm. Launched all the way back in 2005, it was initially met with overwhelmingly negative reviews. Man, who would have guessed that people don't want to look like a messy toddler all day? The ill-conceived product was discontinued shortly thereafter, but was revived under the Read My Lips name a few years ago, albeit with a different lineup of flavors. So let's dive in lips first. Here's my first ever snack-flavored lip balm purchase for all of $5. Now according to the packaging, which labels this as Cheeto Puffs Lip Balm, this is actually orange flavor. I thought orange was the Cheeto color, not the flavor. Guess I'll have to make do. Let's open this sucker up. Okay, let's do a face reveal. Well, not my face, obviously. Say hello to the lips of Be Amazed Unpaid Intern number 442. Give him a hand, everybody. Ah, there's that beautiful Cheeto orange we all know and love. Rather than smelling like Cheetos, unscrewing this smelt like cracking open an orange soda. Well, 442, let's see them beautiful lips. Can you tell it's his first time applying? Mmm, not as bright and bold as I thought. You'd have to layer it on thick to get that Cheetle shine. Still, the flavor is orangey and leaves the lips super moisturized. Verdict? Anyone fancy an orangey smooch? Soup's up. Nothing gets my mouth watering like the smell of tomato soup. <sighs> Just like mom used to heat up. It's a staple food a lot of Westerners grew up with, particularly the Campbell's Canned Stuff, which might be the most famous brand of them all, thanks to a certain Andy Warhol. It's this design that inspired contemporary lifestyle store Ligne Blanche's Campbell Soup Smell Perfumed Candles, which cost an ungodly 60 euros, some 65 bucks, each. Nevertheless, just for you guys, I bought one, promising a classic tomato, basil, and mint scent. Don't remember there being any mint in this soup, or basil for that matter. Oh well, while it certainly looks like Warhol's soup, unfortunately after it's all lit up, it smells like candle. Just a strangely floral candle. The signature tomato scent in this is lacking big time which is disappointing considering I could have bought at least 50 cans of actual soup for the amount this cost. Verdict, a tomato waste. A nice soft mouth. Being one of the most popular franchises in the world, Pokemon has had a lot of unusual tie-in products, like Pokemon piggy banks, Pokemon squirt guns, Pokemon toothpaste, Pokemon consoles, and Pokemon cheese water. Still not over that. The most baffling Poke product I was able to find, however, has got to be this. The Gengar Pillow Tongue Plushy Sleeping Bag thing. AliExpress calls it the Pokemon Cartoon Kawaii Gengar Plush Doll Nap Anime Peripheral Elf Tongue Sleep Pillow Molt Purpose Blanket. <gasps> Woo! Which, uh, doesn't help. The images don't clear things up either with the model sticking their head in this thing, rolling themselves up in the tongue, and generally being cringe. So, obviously, for the price of just 35 bucks, I ordered one for myself. Let's take a look. Ah, what the heck is this monstrosity? Maybe it'll hold together better when I roll out the tongue? Nope, that's still horrible. Why does Gengar look sick? 
As you can see, the tongue is about three feet long, and looks like it had come out with a slight yank. Well, against my better judgment, I'm going in. Hmm. The material is soft, but it smells, um, wrong. Like plastic and bad decisions. Also, I think it's eating my dreams. I can't imagine this would be very comfortable to sleep in. There's no way this product is real. In fact, I don't know why Pokemon would team up with AliExpress to release this, unless, oh my god, it's fake! This Gengar cushion was released by the Pokemon Company and P. Bandai back in 2021 for 300 bucks. It sold out quickly, and what I seem to have bought is a horrible imitation. Verdict, I should have bought the cheese water instead. The Beanza. In the US, Heinz is a brand that's synonymous with ketchup. Across the pond in the UK, however, the company is more famous for their beans. And let me tell you, the Brits love putting beans on toast, on baked potatoes, on fries. Basically, if it's beige, the Brits will put beans on it. So I'm almost not surprised that the Heinz baked beans pizza exists and that it's sold exclusively in the UK. That's right, a frozen pizza slathered in beans. This limited product was available in the British grocery chain Iceland. And once I found out about it, I couldn't resist. Let me tell you, importing a single frozen pizza overseas was an ordeal. Even though the pizza itself only cost a worryingly low three pounds, about five bucks. Man, this packaging is jarring. Like I didn't think beans belonged on pizza enough already. There we go. Open. Now, doesn't this pizza look, um, appetizing? Maybe it'll look better without the plastic film. Nope. I still can't believe I'm going to make someone do this when I could have just done a video about dolphins or something. All right. Well, let's put this one in the oven and see how it turns out. 17 minutes later at 200 degrees Celsius. Sorry, sorry. 392 Fahrenheit. And we're done. Now, something I could tell before even taking a bite is that this is wet. Not saucy, wet. The sauce from the beans combined with the tomato base has led to one very sloppy pizza with a gooier texture than I expected. Just look at me cut this thing. Well, time for a taste test. Man, this thing is barely holding together. Look how slimy this slice is. The beans just slide right off. And to tell you the truth, the flavor of the pizza isn't so much the problem as the mouth feel. The beans retain a lot of heat, and their rough texture combined with the gooey cheese just it feels wrong. Verdict, the Brits, you can keep your beans. Colgate Catastrophe Hard as it may be to believe, the bean pizza isn't the most disgusting licensed food product I found. Say hello to Colgate Lasagna. Yes, the same Colgate that makes the toothpaste. This image blew up online a few years back, with the story supposedly being that Colgate launched a line of TV dinners in the 80s to branch out from toothpaste. The Swedish Museum of Failures, a museum dedicated to branding catastrophes, had a display of the product. However, the Colgate legal team reached out to the museum, stating Colgate had no records of such a product existing. Hmm, something about this mystery leaves a strange taste in my mouth. What do you think, though? Is the lasagna a clever hoax, or are Colgate covering up their minty shame? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more perplexing content. Now, let's move on to another wacky product. Counting Within the Lines We all remember scribbling with Crayola's crayons as kids. Some of us drew dinosaurs, some of us drew astronauts. Me? I just drew YouTube thumbnails over and over again with a glazed-over look in my eyes. Amazing how things pan out, huh? Founded in 1903, Crayola brought color and crayons to children worldwide. But over 90 years later, in 1994, they decided it was time to branch out into math. This crayon company was keen to sink its teeth into new areas of adolescent education, but wanted to remain on brand. Hence the Crayola calculator. Let's take a look at this old contraption in the uh, flesh, er, plastic. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I promise this isn't just a box of Crayolas. I bought this thing fair and square from a second-hand retailer for just 30 bucks. The calculator was manufactured in China by Advanced Concepts Limited, 
and they did a great job replicating the original product. Even the outside looks like a cardboard box. It feels pretty old and flimsy, but to be fair, it is nearly 30 years old. Let's pop this bad boy open. Whoa, the buttons look exactly like crayons. You gotta hand it to them. While the whole concept is a little silly, they really committed to it. The buttons are strangely satisfying to press in, and the screen hasn't faded at all either. Surprisingly, this was built to last. That said, this isn't the most efficient calculator out there. I wouldn't recommend this product to any aerospace engineers that need to do some heavy-duty calculations, but kids will probably think it's cute. Verdict? Just don't let them eat the crayons. Unexpected Products The trend of big companies releasing bizarrely branded products has gotten so bad recently, it's actually inspired art. Take, for example, this old Google Ring game. Ah, yes, nothing says state-of-the-art internet browser quite like the game a Victorian child would play. How about this Crocs umbrella, which keeps you about as dry as a regular pair of Crocs do during wet weather? Or these M&M bullets, for those of us that need a literal shot of sugar. Yeah, these almost believable concepts are all from the mind of Moscow-based designer Ilya Kalimulin whose clever commentary on his series of unexpected products speaks volumes without any words whatsoever. My favorite of his has to be this, though, a Lego gun. Very clever indeed. Definitely highlights how one too many gun-owning adults treat guns like toys instead of, you know, weapons. What do you mean that's real? No, 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 no one would be stupid enough to make a gun look like an actual kid's toy. <laughs> That'd be so dangerous. Imagine if a kid got their hands on that and thought it was, oh my god, it's real. The Block 19 from Utah-based company Culper Precision is a customization kit for the Glock 19 pistol, which doesn't just look like a Lego, but it's also compatible with actual Lego pieces. I started searching everywhere for one of these because I couldn't believe such a dumb idea was real. Turns out, neither could Lego who got Culper to remove the kit from their website and make them promise never to make or sell anything like it in the future. Good to know the toy company understands child safety, but the gun company doesn't. Ugh. Kit Kat Spit Spat I don't know if there's a candy out there with better flavors than a Kit Kat. Orange, mint and dark chocolate, blueberry muffin, it's like they thought of everything. But this American assortment has nothing on Japan's. Just look at these flavors. I ordered this wide selection after hearing tell of a legendary beast, the Wasabi Kit Kat. Yes, you heard right, Wasabi. A combination of chocolate, wafer, and spicy wasabi paste. The exact same stuff normally served alongside sushi. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anywhere online willing to deliver me a box for less than $100. My only chance to get a reasonably priced wasabi Kit Kat was by ordering a random assortment of Japanese Kit Kats in bulk for 20 bucks. Tragically, none of my Lucky Dip Kit Kats were wasabi. But I still got to try a lot of wacky flavors that I never knew existed. The matcha Kit Kat here has a subtle tea flavor that went surprisingly well with the chocolate. The mysterious Halloween flavor was a little orangey and seasonal. Banana caramel was overwhelmingly banana, not much caramel. Contrast with caramel pudding, which was a caramel overload. Peach Kit Kat tasted more like sugar sprinkles than fruit. Chocolate orange Kit Kat is a classic, not much to be said. Melon, on the other hand, was a strange but appealing collision of flavors. Verdict, all as sickly sweet as you can imagine. Oreo no. If you thought Kit Kat had gone crazy with the flavors, then you've obviously never heard of Oreo cookies. They're the absolute worst offender for weird, unsolicited flavors, including products such as pumpkin spice Oreos, candy corn Oreos, PB&J Oreos, key lime pie Oreos. Guys, we get it. You're bored. But eventually I discovered peach oolong tea Oreos. Yeah, a cookie designed to taste like a fruity 500-year-old Chinese tea. It was so weird, I had to try it. Well, let's open these suckers up. Aw, they come in little panda packets. That's cute. Opening the packet, the first thing that hit me was the smell. 
These Oreos are surprisingly fragrant, smelling fresh and minty with just a touch of fruitiness. Opening the Oreo up, you can see they weren't skimping on the food coloring. This filling is bright. Now, let's talk taste. It's a little subtle at first, but then wham, you're slapped in the mouth by the mint, followed by what I can only call the overwhelming taste of green. Fresh, earthy, green. Strangely enough, this actually mixes okay with the slightly bitter Oreo chocolate. The flavors mix more naturally than you might think, and they're not as strange a combination as I first thought. Whew, I think I've had a few too many strange chocolates, though. Verdict? I'm gonna need a big dose of normal chocolate to recalibrate. Okay, not a literal truckload. Jeez. Peppery Beans When I was a kid, I drank Dr. Pepper like it was water. Probably because my mom thought Dr. Pepper was a real doctor, and there's no way a doctor would put their name on something unhealthy. I'm happy this next product wasn't around when I was a kid, or it would have been the only thing she fed me. These are Dr. Pepper Baked Beans, and they're exactly what you think they are. A tin of baked beans emulating the flavor of a nice cold glass of Dr. Pepper. I mean, people fry steak in Dr. Pepper because they enjoy the meat absorbing and caramelizing all the sugar and flavor. So flavored beans can't be that bad, right? What's the worst that could happen? Well, to start with, the can I bought from Walmart cost 10 bucks. For that, I could have bought 10 liters of Dr. Pepper. Already regretting this, I opened the can up and was immediately hit by the smell of Dr. Pepper. These are some stinky beans. Well, let's slap them in the microwave and with a little editing magic, we're done. Oh my god, these actually taste like Dr. Pepper. It isn't just some marketing ploy. I was not prepared for this. I swear, guys, there's even a fizz to them. And it's not because they're past their use-by date. I wouldn't say the flavor's great, but it's surprisingly accurate. In fact, the beans leave a bit of a sickly acidic aftertaste in the mouth. Verdict? I think I need to eat something else. Gotta go fast food. Ah, uh, the cartoon character we all know and love, Sonic the Hedgehog. Being famously fast, funny, and blue, what food crossover do you think makes the most sense for this character? Maybe a blue bunned chili hot dog? It's Sonic's favorite food. It's fast food and it's blue. Makes sense, right? But no. No. What Sonic's creators, Sega, released was this. This is Sonic the Hedgehog curry. It really is blue, by the way. I haven't edited this at all. Apropos of nothing, did you know the blue food coloring has been linked to tumors in rats? Really? Don't know why I brought that up. Anyway, Sega released this abomination exclusively in Japan in 2018 to promote the release of Sonic Mania Plus, with packets being resold on eBay for upwards of 33 bucks. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on a Sonic Curry, as all retailers that previously sold the product appear to be out of stock. I don't feel like I'm missing out, though. According to one review, the stuff tastes disturbingly creamy and turned your poop blue. Kinda glad I dodged this blue bullet. Nose Emoji As you can imagine, my job is exhausting. Well, a lifetime of snacking in front of a computer has made it feel that way. Heck, I break a sweat if I have to close more than one tab, so basically, I don't smell great. Thankfully, I got my hands on this emoji cologne. Yeah, ever wonder what an emoji smells like? Besides that one, of course. As you can see, the box is decked out with all of your favorite emojis. According to the description, the cologne contains a fragrance suggested of strength, individuality, and seduction. Uh-huh. Sure, let's see what we're dealing with. Huh, I expected it to be yellow for some reason. Well, let's have a whiff. Hmm, this probably won't surprise you, but this isn't exactly a subtle or nuanced aroma. It fills the room and lingers for a long time. It smells like a strong, overwhelming mix of a teenage girl's perfume and an old lady's. It was that bad, I thought it might be a fake product, but... It was released by Airval, a company that specializes in perfumes for kids. Wait, back up. Kids? And yet, the online description of this thing claims the fragrance suggests seduction? Verdict? 
Someone in the marketing department has got some serious explaining to do. Weird Whopper The emoji perfume isn't the only baffling cologne I found, though, and it definitely wasn't the cheapest. I spent around 20 bucks on the emoji cologne, but spent over 300 on this official Whopper cologne. That's right, now you can smell like the king. The Burger King, that is. Isn't science amazing? This product was part of a limited-time promotion back in 2015, which explains why picking up an unopened bottle was so pricey. As you can see, this isn't some cheap slap-dish product. Everything about this cologne, from the packaging to the presentation, exudes class and… oh, it fell out. The bottle itself isn't big, containing just over an ounce of liquid, which is between 300 and 450 sprays. Considering we're talking about burger smell, though, that, that, that should be enough. So, to answer the million-dollar question, does this cologne smell like a Whopper? More than I thought it would. It's peppery, but still smells distinctly like cologne, with perfumey notes. It's an odd mix. Verdict? Definitely isn't making me hungry for burgers, though. McDonald's Refresher well, after those two perfumes, I now smell like a mix between a really weird child and a burger-loving madman. I know, I'll use this officially licensed McDonald's McFlurry shower gel to freshen myself up. Once again, this is not a joke. Back in 2022, McDonald's franchises in Austria released a range of shower gels named after iconic menu items including McFlurry and Big Mac, with the burger-based Big Mac one smelling supposedly of cucumber and the McFlurry of pampering chocolate. I went with the sweeter selection for the low, low McValue price of what, 57 bucks. What? Apparently, because they were released as promotional items, the only way to get your hands on them nowadays is through eBay, hence why we paid $57 for shower gel. I'm gonna kill 442. Anyway, it smelled, uh, fine and produced a decent lather. I best test this more thoroughly, though. I'll, ju I'll just be a minute. Hey, wait, where do you get this footage? Verdict, next product, next product. Speed dating. It may shock you to hear, but I'm an avid romance reader. In the mid-2000s, one institution that was keen to get into the romance novel market was none other than NASCAR. Yes, that's right, that NASCAR. The racing sport all about cars, brawls, and testosterone. If you're anything like me, you're realizing this isn't the stereotypical romance setting. But NASCAR realized how male-dominated their brand was and, in an attempt to attract the women folk, produced a series of NASCAR-themed romance novels. The series began in the early 2000s, with the latest seemingly published in 2011. In total, NASCAR produced 67 of these novels, penned by a wide range of authors. No idea how much they helped their brand, but I got my hands on one for all of two bucks. Clearly not in high demand now. This Dangerous Curves by Pamela Britton sounds racy. Here's a little dramatic reading. I'll even do the character voices. And that's the president of the Racing Association, isn't it? Cece asked, after Linda of the Big Boobs left. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not making this up. That's that character's name. Anyway, where were we? It is, Blaine said. You think he's calling to tell you you can't race? I think there's a good chance that he is. But they can't do that. Yes, Cece, they can. That's... Racing. She finished for him. I know, but it sucks. And at that look of resignation on his face, Cece found herself touching his jaw, despite telling herself, No. 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 Okay, that's enough before I get cancelled. Well, it's clear this is a departure from regular NASCAR activities. Verdict? Uh, let's shift gears before things get too steamy. Diabetes Trap Card If you grew up in the late 90s and early 2000s, there's a good chance this impossibly haired anime boy brings back a lot of memories, good and bad. Yu-Gi-Oh! An anime about a card game from a manga series created back in 1996. Well, to celebrate 25 years of Yu-Gi-Oh!, the fine folks at Konami created this in 2021. 
the Millenniyum cereal. If you aren't in the know, in the anime, there are magical artifacts called Millennium items that give you powers and... Uh, look, it was a commercial for a card game is the gist. And for that sweet nostalgia, I bought a box for... Okay, I'm really not proud of this. 50 bucks. Look, it was sold out everywhere and I just... I, I had to know what it tasted like. Anyway, let's open this up. Uh-huh. Looks like cereal. No breaks in the bag and... Wow. It really is just a bag of sugar, huh? The puffs aren't even themed. I was I was hoping for a little Millennium items. Oh well. Now for the taste test. Man, it's so, uh, spongy. Let's send this spoonful to the Shadow Realm. Now, I wish I could tell you there was something novel about this cereal, but, uh, come on. Look at it. They're just balls of condensed sugar and milk. Verdict? If you were five years old, it'd probably be the most amazing thing you'd ever tasted. If you're anything else, a few bites will probably be enough. Still, this isn't the weirdest food based on a well-known character I found. Check out this baffling popsicle made in the likeness of Daniel Craig, released with the film Casino Royale back in 2009. Talk about a license to chill. Still, it doesn't feel good to be jealous of a popsicle's abs. If you think lollipops can't get any more suggestive, though, I have bad news. Take a look at this Jar Jar Binks lollipop produced for the release of The Phantom Menace. Yeah, I don't know how you're meant to uh, enjoy this treat without raising some eyebrows. Still, I bet there were a disturbingly significant number of people who enjoyed the prospect of Frenching Jar Jar. Ew. Crystal Clear In 1992, Pepsi tried to distinguish themselves from their biggest competitor, Coca-Cola, with Crystal Pepsi. The goal was to create a drink with the same recognizable Pepsi flavor, but that looked completely different from Coca-Cola. This led to the creation of the Crystal Clear Crystal Pepsi, which took the world by storm. Nah, just kidding. It was discontinued just over two years later in 1994. David Novak, its conceptualizer, says he still believes the idea was brilliant, but was poorly executed. The product just didn't taste enough like Pepsi. The company brought the drink back in 2018, and I managed to snag a bottle on eBay for just 15 bucks. I wanted a bottle from the 90s, but uh, something tells me I would have died the moment it hit my tongue. Still, this beverage is years old, so I'm understandably a little hesitant to try it. As you can see, it is very transparent. It also looks very flat. Well, let's open it up. Oof, there was no fizz at all when that was unscrewed. Even shaking the dang thing isn't getting me any bubbles. Well, seeing as my life is far too valuable to risk, let's welcome our old friend Be Amazed Intern 442 for a taste test. Bottoms up. According to our comrade here, the drink is, unsurprisingly, as flat as it can possibly be. The old brew still smells like Pepsi, but the flavor is sweeter. Verdict, it's hard to tell whether this is how the drink has always tasted, or it's simply absorbed some of the natural taste of the delicious, biodegrading plastic. Not content with simply poisoning my compatriot once, I decided to put in an order for a can of virgin cola. And no, that's not what bullies used to call any Coca-Cola I drank. Virgin, primarily known for their music and airline services, launched Virgin Cola in 1994 when they were eagerly expanding into different markets. And while not an unmitigated failure, the beverage was discontinued in 2009. But I can still manage to find a can. But it arrived completely empty, despite the tab and seal still being in place. This is made even more annoying when you learn that I paid 10 bucks for this. <sighs> My only theory is that this can I purchased was for display purposes only and never contained the drink to begin with. A real shame as I was looking forward to poisoning my underling a little more. Man, that was a pretty crazy journey through weird and wacky products. Would you want to give any of these a try? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.